Okay, so we're going to talk about Shem's sons today. And, you know, Shem was one of the three sons of Noah. We, you know that. And so the ancestry looks something like this. The children of Shem, this is coming from Genesis 10, 22. You, he had Elam, Ashura, which is Assyria, Aphaxad, which is the line that Abraham came from, and Lud and uh, Aram. Okay, so where are these people today? Where are these people today? And that's what we're going to talk about that. This is the, you can see on the screen, the genealogy of Shem. You see the five brothers. Okay, and then you can count here, if you were counting Noah, that would be one, two, Shem, three, in fact, said, all the way down, and you would see Abraham. He would be the 10th generation. But we're going to talk about all of them, just briefly talk about each one and what we know about them today and who they are. So the, the chapter Jeremiah 49, it talks about Damascus. Uh, it and y'all know that's in area of Syria, right? And then you it talks about Kadar, which was one of Ishmael's descendants. And Hazar is a city that was in Assyria. And this is the place, Hazar was the place that the Israelites, when they went into captivity, were brought to Hazar and, and a place called Gogad, Gogaz. And so it that area in Assyria is talked about in the Bible. Now, most people don't realize that what happened is only the the east side. Do I have that out opposite? No, I have it opposite. It's the east side that of Israel went into captivity by Assyria. Assyria only took out the people on the east side. The people on the west side of the Jordan escaped and really went that's when the story is picked up in the book of Ezra's one and two how they went with their king Hosea above the Black Sea that's where that history comes in and that's Ezra chapter 13 in both one book one and two tells about that migration that book used to be in the Bible it has been taken out okay so if you had it in the Bible now, you would be able to see that, obviously, right? So we also want to talk about Elam and, of course, Aphaxad, right? Well, let's talk about Aphaxad first, which was the line of Abraham. We are told, okay, we're told that, that uh, Josephus talked about us being that nation, the Parthians, and I'm going to get into some of that history. But it really, it a fact said the descendants were the Europeans. I'm gonna, I'm about to prove that. And this is a very interesting verse that is in Jeremiah 49. Jeremiah 49 verse 31. Arise, get you up. The wealthy nation, the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care, which has neither gates or bars which stands or draw dwells alone okay so it's interesting because it's really telling you it's this place that's wealthy that's america's who is describing here and it's that dwells without care which neither has gates or bars it has nothing has no bars or gates or or uh walls around its city that's been described in both Zechariah 2, chapter Zechariah 2, and it's also described in Ezekiel 38, okay? So it's this, do y'all see that they're, it's drawing attention to America here? Because that's, it says the wealthy city, nation. So we know who the wealthy nation is. So the father's done everything except stand on his head to try to tell us that America's in the Bible. But people don't want to hear it, so they're not going to see it. But the only wealthy nation at the end time, there are the major, the wealthy nation at the end time is America. And she doesn't have walls, gates, and bars around her cities. She doesn't have them. She don't have any cities 
that have wall, walls, gates, and bars. She doesn't. It's so interesting. Now, the next verse says, and their camels, which is the elephants, which is another word for elephants, a beast of burden is the definition, shall be booty, and the multitude of the cattle, um, that really represents Ephraim. Ephraim was the bull. He it represents cattle. Is the spoil, and I will scatter all winds of them into the uttermost corners, and I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof. So they're going to scatter to all all the different nations when this war starts, and this is probably in reference what it's talking about because the very last verse in chapter Jer Jeremiah yes. 49 talks about the last days. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about, again, this is talking about America here. So she is representing her descendants are facts. Now, how do we know that? Now let's look at this. This is uh, this. You only have to use this slide. You don't have to tell people and prove who Israel is. You only have to use this one slide. This is the only slide you need. Because you can see where when Josephus, he was the Jewish historian. They all know his, his notoriety. He would have lived at least seven years after the Messiah died. So he didn't get to see the Messiah. And he lived to 100 uh, A.D., uh, and he wrote this. There are two tribes in Assyria and Europe subject to the Romans, while the ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates River till now, and they are an immense multitude, and they are not to be estimated by numbers. In other words, there's so many of them, I can't even count them all. Okay, and this is quoted from his Antiquities, page 11, 133 all right so this this right here is the only quote you need because he's telling you that the israelites were above the euphrates river well if we take a map out we know at that time when he was writing that was the parthian empire and so now this is the the history on the fall of the parthian empire so that it was weakened by internal strife and wars with Rome, and soon was followed by the, the Sicilian Empire, which was the Persian Empire. The Sicilian was the Persian Empire. And it says they were defeated on April 28, 2024 AD, and this by the Sicilian Empire that we just mentioned, that was the Persians that came in there. And a lot of times they just think they just absorb those people. But really, this is where George Rawlinson picks up. He wrote the history of the Parthian Empire. His name's George Rawlinson. And it's the complete history. He said they moved above the Black Sea at this point. That's what, that's what history tells you. And then we know that all of these... Uh, Germanic tribes started moving themselves over into uh, into Western Europe. We got that whole history. They sacked Rome in 410. They, the Parthians went to war. It's called the Forgotten Empire, um, Parthian, because it was the rival to Rome. And it went to war with Rome 13 times. Okay, so most of you know that history. It's a simple history, and when somebody tells you, "Oh, we aren't, uh, we aren't the tribes of Israel," just point them to this history because these people are authorized history teachers. These are not run of the mill. These are are the history teachers that everyone looks to as authorities. Okay, so here's your history. You only have to show them that, and that's your proof that America is bloodline Israel because 75% of her people come from Western Europe. Western Europe, Britain, Scandinavian countries, that's where 75% of them come from. Now let's take a look. All right, the children of Shem were Elam, Ashura, which like we said before, is Assyria. 
a fact said, which was Abraham's descendants, this would be the blessed line. This was won't be the one that gets all the blessings because remember Abraham's descendants got the blessings, right? Then you have a Lud and then you have uh, a Rom. Okay, now I want you to look at the, this is the DNA map of Europe. And R1B, usually they'll call it R1B1, but that, so you see that it covers all of this area right here that's in red. And that would be, you see Norway here, um, and you see the Scandinavian countries would see, they would have, they would have these same people in them. You would have um, England and you'd have Ireland and you'd have the entire Western Europe, including the boot of Italy. All of those have that DNA bloodline. Now notice on the east side of your map, and now you see R1A1. Do y'all understand the way DNA works? It, it works with what they call hollow groups. And these are hollow groups. R1B is a hollow group. R1A is a hollow group. And they, can y'all see that they are in the same family? So whoever these people are right here, R1A, they're in the same family line with R1B. Do y'all see that? Do y'all make that connection? Because that's why they give them the R, because they're in the same family. I believe that most of these people in this R1A group are going to be the other children of Shem. Now, when you look at history and you look at these people, these are very, very poor white people. Very poor. Okay. Over on this side, not so much. They're wealthy and fluent. Up until now, we're all in trouble, right? But and even the descendants that went to America, very wealthy. Okay, you know, they, in other words, they received blessings that the people in the eastern side of Europe didn't receive. You, it's easy to see that these are very poor people for the most part. And so they didn't receive the blessings of Abraham, which means none of these people are from the tribes of the Faxed, which is Abraham's people. Because if they had been, they would have received the blessings for Abraham. Do y'all understand that? Now that that's real easy to see. Okay. Anybody want to make a comment? <clears throat> By the way, right up here where it says in, this is where the Jews that live in Jer Jerusalem now ascended from. This is this this was their original place. They eventually would move themselves over into Russia. Uh, most of them would be in Russia and in Poland. You can even see it here. Uh, and so that's who they are. All right, now, here's R1B. This is all the Israelites, and this is how far their DNA goes. Now, you want to look at the map here. Can y'all see that map? I'm going to try to move it so you can see it. Um, the ones in dark, dark, dark purple, do you see that those... <laughs> That's Iceland, that's uh, Norway, it's um, Ireland, it's Britain, it's the Western Europeans, maybe not so much the boot of the Europeans, and Spain, all in this Western Europe area. And, you know, and then you're going to have some, you see some, some that are 25 to 50 percent. Those would be in that same region, some of that same region because people are mixed. But notice there's some interesting things. There's a pocket here in in Russia that is Israelites. Do y'all see that? There's a, also a pocket in Africa. So to say that all Israelites are white people doesn't necessarily hold water. So, you know, I mean, I just, people will get upset with that, but that's what the DNA is showing. I'm not lying about the DNA. This is where, this is where the, the bloodline of the tribes of Israel went because their bloodline was R1B, okay, which I just have proved because they were the people that migrated into Europe. That's what history tells us. 
Now here's one, R1A. You can see R1A here. And you see the dark pockets, it's mainly concentrated in this, in this area we call uh, Eastern Europe. So I believe that, it, and it makes perfect sense. It shows some of them down here in, into India and in other parts of, of uh, Russia. Um, and so these pockets of people, are, you know, those people would have been uh, R1A which means they're some, from the same family. They're from the same family, but they're not the same people. If they'd been the same people, they would be R1B. Do y'all understand that? So they're like cousins, in other words, which is, is this, I, I mean, the do, there's a lot of things that you can get that lie, but this DNA stuff doesn't seem to be lying. Do y'all see that? And this, these little people over here have an interesting history, by the way. All right, so now, um, okay, now, this is their migration patterns. Now, within this R1A group, you have different, you have different subgroups, and these are all the subgroups, but you can see where they spread, and it's showing you that they basically stayed in this area that we, and concentrated in this area we call uh, you know, Eastern Europe and into some parts of, uh, into, you know, into some parts of Russia. Okay, interesting. So now Assyria, we're going to talk about Assyria next. Okay, and what I want to do is show you bloodline proof of who these people are first. Now we're going to talk about the Assyrians, so let's get to their history. In the last known history on the Assyrians, okay, is put out by Jerome. Jerome wrote in the fourth century. He was the one that actually wrote the Catholic Bible, by the way. He writes the savage tribes. Every time they talk about the savage tribes, they're talking about the uh, Germanic tribes, okay? <laughs> they hated them. Uh, a countless number have overrun all parts of Gaul. In other words, Gaul was this huge, this is what Western Europe was called at that time. It wasn't called Europe. It was called Gaul. And the whole country between the Apps and the Pyrenees, between between the Apps and the Pyrenees, between the Ryan and the Ocean, lay waste to these hordes. And then he mentions all their names. Notice Saxons are in here. Notice the Sarmatians are in here. Now the Sarmatians, which I'm certain have my mouse on right now, are really interesting. That is who. Herodias called Gog. That is who Herodias called Gog. And they, this is the nation right here that pushed all the Israelites, which were in the above the Black Sea, they pushed them out of that region above the Black Sea and pushed them into Western Europe. That's why they went to Western Europe. It's because this tribe right here, the some nations, pushed them there. Now that history, you can get it covered by Stephen Collins. Stephen Collins covers this history. Now it goes on and it says, here's the quote. It's from the Nicene and post-Nicene Fathers, Jerome letter, one, two, three, section 16. Now this is the part I want to get to. In that same letter, it says remarkably, in that same letter, Jerome writes, Assyrio is joined with them. Assyria is with these tribes in Europe and Eastern Europe because they were sitting there, you know, they were sitting in that area above the Black Sea and they they began to get pushed out by the Sumatians. Let's talk about the next tribe, which is Aram. That is, that is Aram would be one of those five sons. You noticed in in the past history, it was in the area of, a, it was part of the Assyrian Empire at that point, but, you know, it actually is Syria today. It is the, it, it's, you could see Damascus here. It, Damascus would have been its capital. Now, according, now I took and pasted this from the Wikipedia on the history section, and it says that Aram means Assyria. 
Do y'all see that? Aram means Assyria. It's a region from the coliforms. And in the Bible, they were called the Armenians. So the Armenians today are Aram. And that's what history is telling us. It said now it says they developed into a large empire, but consisted of numbers of small states in present day Syria. So they're in still in Syria in small groups and in northern Israel. Some of these states are mentioned in the Old Testament. Damascus being the most outstanding one came, which came to encompass most of Syria. Furthermore, uh, Aram Damascus is the common reference to simply Aram in the Old Testament. Now, how about that? So the the area of Syria is one of the five sons, is one of the five sons of Shem. Okay. But I think this is fascinating stuff. Now, when you get to the Jeremiah 49, he talks about Damascus, how it's destroyed. It's also talked about, where's the other chapter is talked about? Um, I think it's in Isaiah chapter seven, it's talked about, but it's in two different places. Uh, and I think one of them's Isaiah seven or Isaiah eight, I can't remember right now. Now, I'm gonna go through just a little bit of the proof here. It says in the seventh century, uh, they were conquered. And they were in the area of Syria. And then it says, however, the native Western Armenic um, is, a, is a language of the Armenian Christian population in Syria is spoken today. So do you see that this is probably one of the reasons why they're Christian? Because it, it tended to flow that way. It flowed through Shem's children. Okay. And it says it's the majority of people in in that area, those do speak Arabic, but there is a group among the Christians that speak the Western Armenic language, which is the one linked back to ancient history. That's what they're telling you here. They still survive among the majority of ethnic divisions in Assyrians, who mainly base are in Iran and the northeastern part of Syria and the southeastern part of Turkey in the northwestern part of Iran. There you go. So the, the people that we refer to as the Assyrians, many of them would have been the descendants of Iran. And I didn't write this. This is just the history, okay? This is the history. Now we're going to talk about Lud. Now Lud was, see here he is, one of the sons of Shem. And Lud is a little harder to identify. All right, the descendants of Lud are usually following Josephus connected to Anatola. Now, Anatola is the name for Asian Minor. It's the old ancient name for Asian Minor, particularly the Lydia. Now, um, you can see that this is Lydia. This is Sardis or Sardinia. Um, and you can see many of these towns here are mentioned in your scripture. They're mentioned in the Bible. The Ephesians, do y'all see that? Uh, Smyrna is mentioned in the Bible. They lived in that. Um, they lived in that region, which was in Asia Minor. Okay, now look what it says here. They are the descendants of Lydia. They are Lithuanians. The, the, they changed, and this is we're going to get into some actual history now. You can see them here. Here's another map of them. You can see them in here. They're more along the coastline. All right, so here's the actual history. They uh, Their original name was of the Lydian Empire was called Maonia. And Maonia is talked about by Homer in, his, in his, some of his writings. Herodotus wrote about them also. He said they were renamed the the uh, Lydians, he goes on, he says that they also were one of the sons of Shem. See, here's, jo here's Josephus saying they're one of the sons of Shem. Do y'all see that? And it says they claimed, Herodotus claimed that they changed their name to the Titanians. All right, so interesting. 
they, according to Dionysius, who was another historian, they would have been in the area of Italy. Do y'all see this? They would have been the Estonians, the Erbrands, um, and they would have been the people that we would consider the Italians. All right, so I'm not saying all of all Italians are from this line of Lydia, but it's possible because we've lost a lot of this history and only the father knows exactly, right? But that's that's what history is backing up. That's what history is backing up. Now, now we want to talk about Elam, okay? Now, Elam is the one that's talked about at the end time, and we're going to read that information on it. Remember, um, Elam was the oldest son of Shem. It's interesting that fact said was like the third son, son of Shem, but he received the blessings. And this is because he was obedient. His line was obedient. You know, that's the reason that you get the blessings because of the obedience. All right, so here's the definition of Elam, and it means to be hidden. It means to be in a distant place. So it means to be hidden, means to be in a distant place or country. Okay, and then it mentions Elam was the son of Shem. So there's no doubt who this these are. All right, so this is what this is what history is going to tell us, and this is what the Bible says. All right, so first thing I want to show you here, we're going to read the last verse first, Jeremiah forty nine thirty nine, and it came to pass in the last days is what how that should read i will bring again the captivity of elam now notice the three h319 is the word for last last days and it means last or end it that's what it means it means you know it it is possible for it just to mean a later time but it it really zeroes in on being the last or the end. So this is talking about in the last days, these people, the Elam, would they're going to go into captivity. All right, so captivity means mainly they're being moved from their land. Now let's start up here in verse 34 of Jeremiah 49. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet against Elam. All right, and then it tells you it's in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah. Well, you know, this probably is a history that was going on back then, too. Remember, history can be fulfilled more than once. Verse 35, and thus said the Lord of hosts, behold, I will break the bow of Elam. That is his power. That is his strength. You know, so what nation at the end time is has, a, has their bow and their power being broken right now, the chief above their might. And upon Elam I will bring four winds of the four corners of heaven and scatter them toward the winds. What country at the end time has their people that have ran out of their country now and they're in other Eastern European countries? And you guys have to ask yourself, why does the Eastern Europeans take them in? Because they're family. That's why. And so going on, and I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies. Their enemy is, is I think, Russia. And I think, yeah, they are being dismayed all right. They're, they're being taken down by their enemies. And before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them. Even my fierce anger, said the Lord, and I will send a sword upon them. And I will consume them. I'm telling you, the only nation that this can be describing, and we're living in the last days, the only nation this can be describing is the Ukraine. Because that is the only nation at war right now. And she's... Linda? Uh -huh. um, back to, uh, what was 49, it? 39. Uh, 49, 39. Mm -hmm. where it says i will bring again the captivity that's the number 7725 and it's the same over in 496 where it says and afterward i will bring again the captivity and it means turn back the captivity i thought 
Well, it's going to turn back the about, captivity. That may or may, the word can be used more than once, but in different ways. And it can also mean the captivity. I understand what you're saying. Not, they'll bring be brought back from the captivity. There's no doubt that they're going to come back from their captivity. That's a real good point. But they will go to war. This Whoever this nation is, and it says in the last days, they will go to war. Do y'all see that? They will go to war and it says they will be dismayed by their enemies. I will bring the point is really very good there, Sarah, because that is true. Um, before them, they seek their life. I will bring evil upon them and I will send a sword upon them. That the only nation this is occurring to right now is in, in Eastern Europe is the only country that can possibly be is the Ukraine. Do y'all see that? Ukraine. Can you can you follow what the father's saying here? Because you you think see this is the problem with people that read their Bible. They can't see it the in modern terms. They can only see it back thousands of years ago. And the father is a he, he says he's the word and he's a living being. This one it just burns me up. Okay, when all of these pastors want to say all this stuff has happened in the past and none of it is present tense. And I'm telling you, the father hasn't left out nothing. Nothing in our news has been left out. You read Jeremiah 49. He talks about the war that, that's been going on in all of these countries, in the Arab countries. Okay, that's Kedar. In the country of, in the area of Damascus, we just had an attack on the, the on the embassy on April 1st in Damascus. So all of these countries are being mentioned. And this is modern time stuff. And nobody wants to believe this because they think, oh, she's just wacko. Well, all these people have the same bloodline as the people in Europe. So how do you figure that? How do they have the same bloodline? Because they're one of Shem's children. Now, they, I may not be right on, the, on all of these because it's real hard to trace this, but that bloodline DNA doesn't lie. And so this is where, this is where I, I want to bring out the point that they're going to fall. It says they will be destroyed and their king and their princess. Their government is going to be taken down. Now, we're in the process of seeing that happen right now. Uh, Russia just hasn't gone in and just ended it. But, you know, these are the, these have to be the same people, the same cousins to the to our people because they look like us, you know, for the most part, most people in Europe are white, um, you know, have light colored features. You know, you have these people in Eastern Europe, they look just like them. They are very similar. Okay, they gotta be cousins. They, they can't be anything but cousins when they're in the same family hollow group. Do y'all understand that? And it says in the last days is when they're going to be destroyed. And then Sarah made the point that I will bring them back from their captive. So they'll, at some point, they their land will be restored and they will be brought back. Okay. So that's the father's purpose is to do all that. So I just want to stop just a second here. And, you know, do all of you see what I'm driving at here? That, you know, everybody thinks that the Bible was written years and years ago, thousands of years ago. It just play, it pertains to those people. It's nice to read it and, and get some stories and some little moral lessons, you know. But no, it's much more than that. It's much, much more than that. It, these people that are living and breathing and these things that are going on right now are written in your Bible. They are. And we just don't, we can't wrap our mind around that for some reason. We just can't. And I mean, I'm not saying dogmatically that this can be 
Ukraine, but I can say that she's in the top five. <laughs> so, you know, this is what, all right. So now this is where the Ukraine sits. Here's crime area down here. Uh, the Israelites we know came up through this area because we have that history that used to be in the Bible from Ezra. He, that they came up above this area. They found all kinds, like 400 um, tombstones that have Israelite inscriptions on them, right in this area along the line of Primaria. So, you know, so this whole area used to be the place that the Israelites set for years until they got pushed out. So, in other words, it used to be our homeland. Now, you know, if I go into the history on this, now here's old ancient uh, Elam. It goes way back in history. You see, here's the Sumer. Sumer was the place where Nimrod came from. Nimrod came from Sumer. That was the old ancient name for, for Babylon, really. And you, you see this whole area here. This whole area was Elam. It said Elam in history was under the captivity of Syrians and then the Persians. The history recorded that they were made slaves and exiles to the Assyrian uh, territories. Well, people in Eastern Europe, th that's why some of them are called Slavic people, because the word Slavic means save, slaves. They've been slaves and they've been in between all these wars all these years. And this is the old Parthian Empire. It's the same area. You know, it just happens to sit in that same old, same area. All right, so the ethnic group, this is what it says, by the turn of the 21st century, the ethnic Ukrainians make up more, more than three-fourths of the population. So whoever they are, they make up three-fourths of the population. Then one-fifth of it is Russian. One-third-fifth third, of their population is Russian. The rest are all these other tribes that are mentioned in Eastern Europe. But see, that's this is talking about their their uh their heritage. You, do y'all see that? Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, nobody can say dogmatically that's who this is, but it's a strong candidate. They are a strong candidate. And the way that Father writes this prophecy, it's coming alive now. And, and there's no doubt about it. And at some point, we're going to take you into the New Testament. And I'm going to tell you right now that New Testament is comes to its fullness. It comes to life at this time in our history. And so at some point, we're going to cover that. You know, there's a, many things that we want to cover. So, um, so that is, like I said, this is an example of what it looks like. This is where some of these people had to have gone. Yeah. And so you, we know that the Ukraine is the Western, the German, Germanic tribe set, right? For many, many centuries. They set there 600 <laughs> years. That's right. We all, you also forgot about Troy. When Troy fell, the tribe of Dan and Jer Judah went to the Ukraine too. That's where they changed all the names of the rivers. Let's just quickly, there's written... Before the exodus out of Egypt, the tribe of Dan went into Greece, and it was called Dan, Dana, just like when they migrated to Ireland. And the tribe of Judah ruled over the Red Lion, and it just goes up. And they, when Troy fell, uh, twelve thousand of Danites and, and Judah went to the Ukraine. It's all documented, and so it became. That's where we have the royal Scythians that were the, by Rostov, and that's where they buried all our the kings of of Israel in in uh, in the Crimea area. Also, when the when the in Western Israel, when they went when it fell to the Assyrians, in Ezra it says that they went up through the pass of the Israelites, which is in the Caucasus Mountains, and they only changed that name up to 1850. There's the biggest pass, and also the um, the uh, top of that pass is called Mount Zion. So there's so much history, so much so much history in there that we don't even know. But if you can just remember the quote from. Josephus, because Josephus would have known where the Israelites were at that time. You know, you understand that. Also, he lived during that time. Yeah, he knew where they were. That's right. But also the Bible says that in Ezra, that it says in there that, that the, there are so many Israelites left 
and went into the Ukraine that they had an army of 120,000 men guarding them. Yeah. It says in Ezra. So, you know, when that prophecy comes in, it says the third die by war, third die by famine, third die by pestilence. You know that they never got a fulfilled in the first attack on Israel. It didn't. Because that would have wiped out two thirds of Israel at that time, and and you only had the tribes on the on the um, on the east side of the Jordan that were impacted because the ones on the west side left out, and you know they left a little skirmish area, just a small little group there, remnant, but all of those guys moved out. They came out, of, and which is what happens when there's a war. You know, people, we've never had a war, so we have no idea. Our people, because I really don't want to see what's going to happen. If, but this country has gotten so far down the pipe, it's so much like Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't see how the father can just look the other way forever. He's got to bring some kind of punishment on this land. Because otherwise, they'll never turn their ways around. You know, the father wrote that those books, those 11 books of the prophets, they, he wrote it for the people back then, and he wrote it for us today. And that's the truth. And, it, and you can go look and count how many times it says in the last days, I think it's like 61 times, in, mostly in those books, but also in the Old Testament. 61 times it says in the latter days. So... He's talking about the latter days, you know, that things happen in the last days. So unless you just want to ignore those 61 verses, you know, if you want to just ignore that and say, oh, that's all got done years ago and ain't going to happen again. Well, I would love to believe that, but the Bible was very directly telling you that some of the same things that happened then are going to repeat. And then, and we can prove prove that without a shadow of a doubt by going to Zechariah chapter two. All right. So anyway, you know, you you got three books of those eleven that were written after both Israel and Judah went into captivity. Both of them went into captivity. Uh, all three of those books were written after Judah had already come back into the land. So who are they written to? You know, so that's a, a real good question because they couldn't have been written to the people that had already gone into captivity and then came back 70 years later because the book of Haggai and the book of Zechariah and Malachi, all three of those books were written after Judah went back into the land after her captivity after 70 years. So, you know... It's you just it can't hold water. You know, you can't hold water on this idea that all of this stuff has already happened because it's just can't be. For more information about this broadcast, please visit our website at www.12tribehistory.com. That is the number 12, tribehistory.com, or email us at lwatson44 at cox.net with any questions or comments.